Good evening and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service here at St. Andrew's Parish. Uh, I hope that as you came in you were able to uh, grab one of your, our bulletins. This is our guide to our service and, uh, and the bold font is your response to many of the readings that we will share um, in, in this service. And so let us begin now. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to be with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. And let us join in this opening prayer. Stop, listen, repent. Let go the rush and noise. And wait patiently before God. Let the busyness of your body rest. Let the worries of your mind rest. Let the doubts of your heart rest. Let us hear God's call to holiness. Open the deep places of our hearts and allow your spirit to recreate. Into peace. Worry into trust. Doubt into hope. Lord, in the stillness of this moment, may we repent of ways that do not serve you and admit to tensions that tell us where we need to change. As we enter this season of reflection and refocus, let us walk the way of the cross together and move forward without fear into God's eternal purposes. Amen. Our first scripture reading for tonight is actually pretty standard for Ash Wednesday. This is the Joel passage. Joel 2, the first and second verses, followed by the 12th through the 17th verses. Blow the trumpet in Zion, the prophet says. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will it be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether He will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind Him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the children. Even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Here ends the lesson. Our psalm, responsive psalm tonight, is going to be sung um, by Brian. But there is a response that you and I have. And it did not get printed in here, so you're going to have to memorize it. It's eight words. Okay? Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Now, if you have a problem saying that, well, we got issues. (laughs) So let's practice that. Not singing it, just simply saying it. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. If you'll play it one time. 
I'm Brian. Okay. <laughs> of your compassion wipe out my offense thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me be merciful O Lord for we have sinned for I acknowledge my offense and my sin is before me always Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. And the second reading this night for us, and for those of you who Pay attention to the upper room. You will notice that this was the reading for this morning, for today's devotion for Ash Wednesday. Isaiah 58 is actually the alternate reading for this season, or for this, uh, for this night. Um, but for whatever reason, the upper room chose to use it. And as I read over it um, yesterday and the day before, I felt like this was... A word that needed to be spoken. And so hear Isaiah's word out of chapter 58. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day, they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of my righteous judgments and they delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast but do not see you? Why humble ourselves but do not notice, they ask of God. Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? 
and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover them, not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break. It shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. And you shall cry for help, and He will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of fingers, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt rebuilt you shall rise raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach a restorer of the streets to live in and truly this night friends as this is the word of god for us the people of god thanks be to god There is much, much, much darkness in this world right now. If you are like me and you catch snippets of the news or if you tune in night in and night day to the 24-hour news cycle, however you choose to get your news, you don't have to watch for very long before before it's hard to watch anymore. And it doesn't matter how you vote, where you come from, your race or your gender. There's enough darkness to go around for all of us. And it seems like we're confronted by this darkness, especially now. On this night, a night in which we admit our own mortality, a a night in which we wrestle with, a day in which we wrestle with the ashes and what those mean for us. I've been moved recently to think of things a little differently and, and I've been struck by a concept that, well, I think this concept has become all too familiar in our day and age. And I think that it has a lot to do with the darkness that we see all around us. See, friends, we live in in a consumeristic kind of age, a consumer society. So what does that exactly mean? Well, it means that you and I are defined by what we consume. You are what you eat kind of mentality. It's just that our consumer culture is no longer based on the products that we choose to buy and sell, but possibly more so on people nowadays. Think about this. I want to propose to you that we actually nowadays consume people. We do this day to day. Some of us call it gossip. Some of it call us by other names. We do this with how we read and how we respond and how we watch and how we interact with one another. And you don't have to be driving around town very long to see this play out. And heavens forbid, please don't ever read the comments on a news story. Whether that's online or, 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 yeah, well, most of the time, it's online. Let's just stop there. Don't read the comments online. Because they are, in my opinion, the very worst in humanity. 
It seems that people hide behind a computer screen a lot more easily and readily nowadays. But in thought, word, and deed, we are very quick to betray our brothers and sisters of humanity. Now, now to, to just quickly to demonstrate how common this is, this language is among us, you're not even going to think twice about this ever. You, you, you won't think twice about this if you had heard this word before I started talking. But we have whole departments and businesses, and I apologize if you work in one of these little departments, but we have whole departments in our businesses that are called human resources. Have you ever thought about that? I bet you will now. Hey, somebody asks me what our staff parish relations committee does or our pastor parish relations committee and I say to them it's sort of like our human resources and every time it rolls out of my mouth I kind of wince because now whether we mean it like that or not listen to the implications there that humans are resources that what we do with other peoples we consume them the definition of a resource is a source or a supply in which a benefit is produced we use it up and when a resource runs out or is exhausted some of us recycle others of us throw away but regardless we move on writer and, and blogger Rachel Held Evans says this about um, fasting this year. This is one of her words. She says, one fast that has crossed my mind this week is the idea of giving up the consumption of people for Lent. Our culture through social media, reality TV, celebrity gossip, etc. has so profoundly commodified people, actual human beings, it, become, it has become a phenomenon we hardly even notice anymore. So friends, when we look out at a world and we see the brokenness, we see the darkness all around, it is very, very quick and easy to cast a judging eye, to point a finger and to say, oh, those people over there. But this night, and maybe even this season, this is where we admit, admit our own brokenness our own frailty, our own mortality, and as we look at a world that is often filled with consuming each other, may we never lose sight of the darkness that we find within each of us. You see, here's, here's the good news, because Ash Wednesday's heavy. I've had a heavy day. It's heavy. To be confronted with your own mortality, to, to think about death in a new way, to realize that the, the ashes that will be placed on your forehead in a few moments were celebratory ashes. These, these uh, ashes came from the palm branches that were in the hands of children last year, waving them around in a beautiful, crazy display right here. And they went from those hands, those innocent hands, into a fire to be burned, to be placed on our heads, and to remind us of something that the world doesn't want us to be reminded of, that we'll die. But see, here's what happened when you start dealing, when we start dealing with our own brokenness, when we start dealing with the own, our own darkness inside, when we start dealing with our own junk, see, that's when God gets involved. And that's when redemption is possible. So here's your hope for tonight. As you're reminded that 
you're going to die. That God loves to create out of darkness. Barbara Brown Taylor says it this way, new life starts in the dark. Whether it's the seed in the ground or the baby in the womb or Jesus in the tomb. It starts in the dark. Or how Isaiah shared with the people that day. I read it to you a moment ago. Let me read it to you again. 58 verse 9. Here it is. Then you shall call the Lord and He will answer. You shall cry for help and He'll say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, then your light shall rise in the darkness. And your gloom be like the noonday. So may you and I, may we together, if there's any hope for this world that is so filled with darkness, may we confront the darkness that was in within each of us. And with God's help, start to shine a little bit of light. Amen? Amen. Here now our invitation to the observance of Lenten discipline. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church from before the Easter celebration that there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were, who were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and the forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer and fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature. Let us now bow before our Creator and Redeemer. If you would bow your heads. Almighty God, You have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be a sign to us of our mortality and penitence so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given life everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I'll invite you to come at this time as you feel led, this is not sort of organized with any kind of ushers or anything of that nature, and you're invited to come and to receive the mark of the cross on your forehead. If you um, would rather have it on your hand, simply um, lift that to me. I'll, I'll set that before you, and I'll, I'll place it in your hand instead. And then you're invited to simply come and to spend as much time as you need um, at the altar rail uh, in prayer as we begin uh, this season together. So let us come.